what we know uh, today about the uh, species uh, and evolution uh, following Darwin's time, uh, that, that there's a genetic selection, uh, an adaptation by organisms to uh, evolve into various niches. And his work on uh, the Galapagos Island really, really showed that. I think Darwin, uh, his little warm pond, uh, warm little pond idea was, was uh, outstanding and way ahead of its time, firstly. I, I believe that he was thinking that pond in terms of uh, a biogenic uh, uh, molecules or precursors to life. Uh, if you get warm or hot conditions, a lot of those precursor biomolecules don't last very long. And when you want, when life originates, it's a probability event. You want to put things together, these, you know, cyanide and uh, formaldehyde and methane together for a little, little longer, more than hours to minutes. You want them together for years. And, and when you go to a, a colder environment, you can do that. Uh, you can keep things together for decades, hundreds of years in a colder environment. Our research over the last 25 years has now shown that the continent is not devoid of life. We're finding microorganisms. Now, that, and that's, it's not charismatic megafauna, okay, we're talking about. It's microbial life. And that's, when we talk about origins of life, it's microbes we're talking about. They were the first life. They've been around three and a half billion years. For the emerging picture is there's huge rivers under the ice sheet and lakes under there, some of the largest lakes on our planet under there, Lake Vostok being the largest we know about. So it's not devoid of life, and uh, this life has been on the continent for, for a long, long time. Uh, I think we're going to find uh, a, a huge biodiversity of, of, of organisms. Now, I, we have two samples, uh, really, in the whole continent of, of Antarctica. There, 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 we, we have several, we have two samples that I, that I know of that have come from the bottom, one from West Antarctica, and there were as many bacteria per gram of soil as you see in, in farmland. It was just amazing. Uh, and then the work we've done in my lab on, on the, the Lake Vostok system is showing that uh, that lake has as many uh, bacteria in it as we would see in the, in, in the open ocean. The next big discovery in polar research is, is going to be that the ice sheet's alive. It, it's a living ice sheet. Okay, it's, it's, um, it, it's full of organisms that are cold-loving organisms we call sacrophiles. And these organisms do not make a living with light. That, they, they don't uh, live up with photosynthetic energy, but they eat rocks. Uh, they, 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 they work on weathering products of the minerals, and they, so they're, 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 that's where they get their energy. And uh, the carbon CO2. I, I think that's going to be our next big discovery in the next five or ten years, uh, and, and, and that discovery has got global implications because if, if we do find it, it's going to, uh, our estimates show that the, the Antarctic ice sheet will then contain a pool of organic carbon, in term, biological organic carbon uh, bacteria uh, that rivals, uh, it, it actually exceeds all the surface lakes. Uh, and rivers on our planet. It starts approaching soils and, uh, and temperate regions. So I think that's the next big discovery.